based on the questions that you've provided for the last few weeks. And so I'm going to start with one that kind of leads us into the other. What, what must it be like for spouses who reunite in heaven? This was essentially where, where it was going, wherever heaven or whatever heaven might be. And so, you know, I, the honest answer to this is, I don't know. Or I like, neither do you. <laughs> and I would assume that even in this room, we all have different hopes of what that will be like. You can imagine that for some marriages, right, you might not want to be reunited in heaven. <laughs> and I don't mean that for the joking part. Like, there is real abuse in the world. There's real, uh, real uh, pain in the world. And so, you know, just because one of us has an expectation of what should be, that doesn't mean that everyone has the same expectations, right? So, Jesus made one comment, one comment about marriage in heaven. Always bad to make theology out of one comment. Always. Okay? Now, I'm not going to, but I'm saying that's a bad <laughs> use of scripture. So what we can what we can look at is that he was making a comment to the Sadducees. The Sadducees were the people who ran the temple rites, right? They're, they're not the Pharisees, they were the Sadducees. And they believed that there was no such thing as resurrection of the dead. And so what they did was they found a discrepancy in the law. And then they went to Jesus and they said, you know, one part of the law says that if a woman is widowed, she has to marry her brother-in-law. And that would mean that if there is resurrection, then she's married to two people. And the law also says can't be married to two, well, a woman can't be married to two people. Men, they have plenty of wives, right? <laughs> so they're going, that was their motivation for asking this question. Their motivation wasn't about, I miss my spouse, or my spouse died before me and I wonder what it's going to be like after. That was not what Jesus was answering. And therefore, his answer to the Sadducees, I, I will bet, would not be his answer to you if your motivation was about, what's it going to be like when I reunite with my beloved spouse? Or, what's it going to be like if I have to reunite with something that would be painful? Right? Jesus isn't answering that question. So, like I said, I, I have no idea. Right? But I've also said throughout this whole series, I'm only going to answer questions in a pastoral way. So I'm pretending that you're coming to me in my study and you're asking me a question. And that means you have a reason, and usually an emotional reason, to ask. And so my pastoral response is that Jesus would probably answer your question with a question by saying, what's your motivation for asking? He would want to know, what is it about your relationship that you're concerned about? Is it, is it a fear? Is it a worry? Is it a hope? Is it a dream? He might even want to know, what is it that you treasure about your relationships in, on earth? Maybe not just about your spouse, right? I mean, it sounds very much like Jesus to say, so you're asking me about your spouse, let me ask you about your mom, or your dad, or your cousin, or your grandma. What, what do you treasure about your relationships? And now let's talk about that, because what you treasure, I hear, what you, I hear your question about the things you treasure here on earth, and wondering what would happen after earth is done for you. Why are you laughing at me? I'm just thinking Jesus sounds a lot like the guy I used to see once a week. Uh, <laughs> there are best friends. <laughs> it used to cost me $125. <laughs> 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 Jesus might be like, what are you
emotions wrapped up in some of them too. And we ask that you would be in all parts of our life, not just the parts we can touch, but even the parts we can't touch. And that you would help us navigate how we deal with loss, how we hope for our future, that we would not keep you away from that portion of our life here on earth. As we turn our attention to the scriptures, God, I pray that you would open our minds and our hearts, that we would continue to learn from you. In Jesus' name.